Today we're heading to Denali National Park on the Alaskan Railroad. We're gonna stop in a couple of ports along the way, but this train is the Gold Star Service. We've got a glass top roof, and the views along the way should be incredible. Luck on my side, I had some of the most clear and beautiful days. And on clear days like the one I had, you can spot Denali, the tallest mountain in America, right outside the train windows as you head north. the train is actually stopped just here in the middle of the wilderness. This is actually called a flag stop and this is the only train in Alaska where people that actually live way out here in the middle of nowhere can actually flag down the train and they can either bring it mail, packages, things they need shipped or they can actually also board the train, hop on for a few miles if they need to and they actually are able to pay by mile for riding the train. We've just arrived here in Denali National Park. We are at the train depot. I'm just gonna wait for my shuttle, head to my hotel, and then we've got two full days in the park, and I am so excited for that. I just checked in to my hotel here at Denali National Park, which is about 10 miles south of the main visitor center. And I will say I'm learning a lot in the first few minutes here in the park. Number one, it's really difficult to get around if you don't have a rental car. If you don't have a car, you may want to book some sort of tour. There are bus tours, which I'll get more into as we visit inside the park over the next few days. There's also whitewater rafting and a lot of other activities that you can do here. One of my main reasons for coming to Denali this year is to kind of check it out because next year I plan on hiking Denali, the mountain, which is the tallest mountain in America. And I wanted to come see the park, see what I would want to see if I returned to the park and kind of get a lay of the land. There are more than six million acres in Denali, making it one of the largest parks in America. Full of pristine parkland, magnificent wildlife, and the towering Denali, which are all highlights of this world famous national park. It's official, I'm here, back to bed. <laughs> Just kidding. Good morning, everybody. First full day in Denali. I'm gonna be heading out on a little trail this morning called the Triple Lakes Trail. It's actually right by the hotel, and as is the sign, which is great. Uh, so I'm gonna do up to the first lake, which is about three miles round trip, and then we have something really exciting planned. So that's my hotel there. They've got cabins, a campground, there's a hotel across the street where you can actually get breakfast and lunch. And this is also a popular spot for rafts to go down the river. So this trail 
actually goes about nine miles and it connects where we are now with some of the hotels over here to the park. So you can actually hike it one way if you want, end up over closer to the visitor center. And then from there you could hop on a bus into the park. That's pretty long. <laughs> and uh, obviously not gonna do that whole thing today. As I said, I'm just gonna head out to this first lake and head back. They say Alaska has three seasons, June, July, August, and winter. And up here in Denali, because it is a little bit farther north than where we've been so far, the colors are rapidly changing already. You know, most of the berries have passed, which is good news for me being out here by myself. And the colors are just so vibrant. It's absolutely beautiful. You guys may notice I'm looking around a lot here as we're walking. And that's because I want to make sure I see any bears or other animals if they are out here. I'm also just talking loudly to myself as I hike here. And I've got a whistle with a bell in it to make noise as well. So delicious. Behind me right here is a beaver lodge. So if you've never seen one of these, this is kind of what they look like. This one's actually really massive. So there's probably a couple families of beavers living in there. Beavers oftentimes also share their lodges with other animals like ducks and muskrat. And I'm gonna be really quiet and get close because I could actually hear a little bit of a beaver tail when I was standing over here earlier. He's just munching on the grass. As you can see, just totally alone out here, which is why it's really important to make sure you're being safe while you're out here alone. Um, I do have my in reach today. I've got a whistle, I've got a safety alarm. Um, picking up some bear spray when I get back to the hotel as it wasn't open yet for rentals and there's just a lot of peace and quiet out here so it's just beautiful. Our next hike here in Denali is only reachable by a helicopter or a multi-day hike. So we are just about to hop in one of these and fly to a more remote part outside the park where we're gonna do some more hiking.
Denali National Park and neighboring state park straddle more than 160 miles of the Alaska Range, which is some of the best hiking in the world, as long as you don't mind not following a trail. Millions of miles of wilderness behind us. Let's look at that. Now, reaching this area on foot would normally take a few days, so the luxury of a helicopter means that you can hike just about anywhere. Our guide had just pointed out he has a little rock collection that he's been collecting from all the times he's been out here. One of the cool things he discovered quite a while ago was this petrified wood. Now the wood has completely turned to stone and is probably millions of years old. So many edible things up here on the Tetra. And one of the things that I'm going to show you right now is actually not edible for us, but it's one of the bear's favorite things to munch on. It's actually called bear flower. It's kind of waxy. And if you smell the root of it, it smells a bit like uh, perfume or cologne. And this is a, often a spot where you can see the bears eating earlier in the summer. Not so much now. A lot of it's dying and uh, changing colors here. As our hike came to a close, we stumbled upon the carcass of a wolverine, quite a rare species even up here in Alaska. This one our guide explained was most likely pulled off the mountain by a golden eagle, which is one of the top predators out here in the mountains. This morning I'm heading out on one of the Denali Park bus tours. This is probably the most popular way for people to see the park. Most visitors that come here to Denali do some sort of bus tour, whether they do a narrated or unnarrated version. I'm going to be heading out with Backcountry at Denali to do their bus tour this morning, which is going to go to mile 30. Now it is after September 3rd first, I should say, and they've significantly reduced the amount of miles the bus will go into the park. There was also a landslide just about a week ago that closed the park road after mile 44. This is my best chance of probably seeing some wildlife. It is a bit gloomy today, so fingers crossed that we'll see something from the bus window. Just a week before I arrived, there was a massive landslide caused by climate change that melted permafrost and took out the road around mile 44. Now normally the park road runs to mile 92, connecting the park entrance with several different visitor centers and a farther out park lodge. Now there's no word yet on when this road will reopen as there is massive amounts of work that needs to be done to fix it. So our tour just stopped at the Talanika rest stop. Now this is around mile 30 here on the park road. Normally these tours go much farther into the park, but because of the season and also the road closure, this is where we're going to be turning around today. There's a nice viewpoint here where you can see the river and we're going to have some hot beverages and then head back to the main part of the park. The park's main large animals are moose, bear, caribou, wolves, and doll sheep. And if you're heading out by bus, you'll want to bring binoculars and a long lens to try and capture them. Okay. 
just got back from that wonderful bus tour. We saw caribou and moose. I was hoping to see some other stuff, but that's all we saw today, which was great to see those animals with their big antlers. And I've just come to the bus stop here. Now, this is where you actually get on any of the park concessionaires buses that take you throughout the park. That's gonna be the camping and backpacking bus, the narrated and non-narrated buses as well, like the Tundra Explorer. And this, these buses as well also go to some of the other visitors centers when those are open and the road is open, which they're not right now. I'm actually waiting for a shuttle that goes back to one of the hotels here in the area. This is also where most of the shuttles will pick you up if you are taking a hotel shuttle as well. So we're doing Sugar Loaf Mountain. This is actually not in the park, but just adjacent to the park. It starts behind the hotel. These are my two new solo hiking <laughs> friends that have joined. So this is a pretty steep mountain. It's about four and a half miles. It's a calf burner for sure, but we'll see at the top. According to locals, this is one of the best hikes in the area. Not only does it have stunning views, but there are also few visitors. Just be aware of the strong winds that come over this ridge line and howl down the other side. It is my last morning here in Denali. I have just actually dropped my bags off at the train depot. They open at 9.30 in the morning. Uh, my train's not till 12.30, which gives me a couple hours here to hit one last trail before I leave Denali. The trail I've chosen this morning is the Horseshoe Lake Trail. Now this is only around two miles, so pretty short, and it's actually located just half a mile from the railroad depot and visitor center. So the vast majority of trails here in Denali are located in what's called the Front Range. And that's basically the first 15 miles of the park that's accessible by a private vehicle and all of the shuttles as well. So most of the 35 actual trails here in the park are in this area with a lot of them being right here situated around the visitor center this is one of the more popular hikes because it's so accessible and one of the other ones that's in the same area is the mount healy overlook which is about a seven and a half mile hike so if you're looking for more of a challenge and you want to get up on one of the mountain peaks here that's also a great option Now that is a view I certainly can't complain about. Now this little walk down the lake only took me about 20 minutes. It's got some stairs and a little bit of an incline that you're gonna have to go back up, but all in all, pretty easy. And I would say this is pretty accessible for everyone that's gonna be coming up here to Denali. Oh my God. Oh my God. There's a lynx over there. my god as i was talking to the camera a lynx walked by me it was massive and i wish i could show it to you on camera but it's gone
I'm not sure where it went. I'm also not right. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that was one of the coolest animal experiences I've ever had. That lynx was massive. And you know, he has the little furry ears that are pretty instinctive of a lynx. Uh, I've only ever seen really them in books about wildlife. And he was surprisingly large, the size of a mountain lion. So that was, that was really cool. And he seemed to slink off into the forest. So I'm now just looking at this beaver dam which is pretty cool and you saw in one of the other hikes that we did we saw a beaver lodge this is actually a dam they've dammed this entire lake here and created a habitat for themselves What an incredible ending to my time here in Denali National Park. You know, I hadn't planned on doing this trail and I'm so glad that I was able to drop my bags off and get here. That Lynx was just an incredible ending to this short little trip. And I wanna show you guys more of this park, so I'm definitely gonna be back. This is not my only trip here. I know I sh only showed you a small taste of what you can see here in Denali. You know, there's six million acres, most of that being backcountry and if you can get here and get out in that backcountry, you're gonna see so much more wildlife. You know, we didn't get to see the big five of Denali, but we did get to see moose and caribou and that lynx this morning, which was just a bigger cat than I could have ever imagined, honestly, but absolutely beautiful. So there's so much more to do, whitewater rafting, rock climbing. This was a great last minute trip that I planned and was able to see just so much of the beauty here but I wanna show you guys more, so make sure you stay tuned. I will definitely be back in Alaska next summer. So definitely leave a comment down below. Let me know if you wanna see more national parks, if you wanna see more of Alaska. I've got lots of stuff coming up, so if you're new here, make sure you hit subscribe, give this video a like, and I will see you guys in the next video.